On today's episode, SpaceX fires up their next generation Starship, Blue Origin makes lofty claims about New Glenn, and James Webb can sense the tension in the universe. SpaceX has capped off an incredible year of Starship development with a full static fire test of their brand new upper stage Block 2 Starship, signaling that the hardware is now ready for flight number 7. But when will that be, and what should we be expecting? Word on the street is that we should expect the next launch from Starbase to happen on the 11th of January. That's according to intel from NASA and the FAA, and we should expect a return to the early morning launch times as well. We know that NASA has plans to use a specially equipped jet airplane that's going to capture thermal imagery of the Starship upper stage as it returns from space. So to get the clearest picture of just how hot Starship gets and where, the landing has to happen in total darkness. Even the aircraft doing the thermal imaging has to fly with all of its exterior and interior lights switched off, which is why NASA had to file for a special exemption with the FAA and hence why we know when the new launch window will open. NASA is scheduled to fly their jet over to Perth, Australia on January the 3rd. Now, what should we expect from flight number 7? Well, the star of the show will be the Block 2 ship. It's a little bit taller and carries a lot more propellant, so this will be a significantly more capable vehicle than what we've seen before at carrying payload into orbit. But for flight number 7, we'll be looking more towards the landing performance. Elon Musk has said that if Flight 7 has a clean landing of the upper stage on the water, then Flight 8 will be clear for a launch tower catch attempt. Just like what we saw with the Super Heavy booster in October, only this time the ship will return to the launch site from a much higher altitude and it will be coming down over the land from Mexico. So what we're hoping for with Flight 7 is a repeat of the landing pattern that we were able to see in the light of day on Flight 6 in November, only this time the ship needs to be in much better condition when it reaches the Earth. Flight 6 looked fantastic up until the point when it tipped over and hit the water, then it immediately broke apart and caught on fire. We know that SpaceX is planning to recover the Flight 7 Starship in one piece this time, and this is thanks to reporting from Interstellar Gateway. Those guys have been following recovery crews on the northwest coast of Australia, who have been making trips out and back to the Flight 6 landing zone, and they're bringing back heat shield tiles and other scraps of Starship debris. What Interstellar Gateway has found is that the recovery team is getting prepared to tow a fully intact vehicle back to port. So I think that's a pretty good indicator that success for Flight 7 is a floating starship that can be recovered and studied ahead of Flight Number 8. And we have some very strong indications that the Block 2 ship will perform significantly better than any previous attempt. The biggest change being the vehicle's forward flap design. Elon Musk elaborated on this a couple months ago, writing on X, I'm so glad we finally fixed the forward flap design. The old one was killing me. Too large and heavy and positioned at 180 degrees, requiring large static arrow and not fully stowed. So that pushes the nose backwards during the high heating supersonic phase of flight, which is the opposite of what you want. And those improved aerodynamics will combine with an upgraded heat shield design for Flight 7. Not only does this ship have the upgraded external tiles, it also has the new secondary ablative layer underneath for added protection. So we have a lot to look forward to after the holidays. But we might even have another big launch coming before that. Over at Blue Origin, the company is still claiming that its new Glenn rocket is on schedule for its first launch before the end of 2024, which as of right now is only two weeks away. Could they actually do that? The first mission with New Glenn is named NG-1, and it represents the biggest step in Blue Origin history, the leap towards orbital spaceflight. The payload for this inaugural flight will be the Blue Ring Pathfinder. This is a vehicle designed to test key technologies for Blue Origin's Blue Ring Orbital Transfer Vehicle. The Blue Ring is a versatile system designed to deliver satellites to specific orbits and even host payloads that stay attached. This adaptability positions it as a valuable tool for future missions, whether commercial or governmental. The Pathfinder includes systems like a communications array, power systems, and flight computer. 
These systems will remain connected to the second stage of the rocket during a six-hour mission, allowing the company to gather data about how Blue Ring performs in space. According to Paul Eberts, a senior vice president at Blue Origin, this mission is an important milestone in their plans to develop adaptable and responsive space systems. Quote, We're excited to demonstrate Blue Ring's advanced in-space operations on New Glenn's inaugural mission. Blue Ring plays a critical role in building a road to space, and this mission is an important first step for Blue Ring and enabling dynamic and responsive operations that will greatly benefit our nation. As for New Glenn itself, Blue Origin has been conducting final tests at Cape Canaveral including tanking tests of the rocket's first stage. However, the company is still waiting for a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is required before the rocket can lift off. New Glenn's design is centered on reusability and efficiency. Standing at over 320 feet tall, the rocket features a first stage capable of flying at least 25 missions. Its payload capacity and larger fairing size allow it to support a wide variety of satellite deployments, making it a flexible choice for different kinds of space missions. Jeff Bezos, founder of Blue Origin, recently commented on the status of the launch, saying it's literally on the pad now waiting for regulatory approval. We're very, very close. While the exact date for the launch hasn't been confirmed, Blue Origin remains optimistic that it will happen by the end of this year. Interestingly, the payload for this first mission wasn't originally going to be the Blue Ring Pathfinder. Blue Origin had planned to launch a NASA mission called Escapade, which involved two small spacecraft designed to study the Mars magnetosphere. However, NASA decided to delay Escapade's launch because of concerns that New Glenn might not be ready in time for its tight launch window, and that mission is now scheduled for spring of 2025. If the New Glenn rocket launches successfully, it will mark a significant step forward for Blue Origin's space operation. The combination of the rocket and the Blue Ring transfer vehicle has the potential to make satellite deployment and space missions more flexible, with increased payload capacity to low Earth orbit and reduced costs thanks to the first stage reusability. For now, the company is focusing on completing its final preparations and getting the necessary approvals. New findings from the James Webb Space Telescope have confirmed earlier measurements of the universe's expansion rate, originally made by the Hubble Space Telescope. This adds to the growing evidence that there may be gaps in our current understanding of how the universe expands, potentially pointing to new physics. The expansion rate of the universe, measured by something called the Hubble constant, has been a source of debate among scientists. This constant tells us how fast the universe is growing, but different methods of measurement have produced conflicting results. Hubble's measurements gave a value of about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, while other techniques, like studying the afterglow of the Big Bang, suggested a slower rate of 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Webb's precision has allowed the astronomers to confirm Hubble's earlier findings with even greater accuracy. By observing 1,000 Cepheid variable stars in galaxies up to 130 million light-years away, Webb was able to see past interstellar dust that often blurs Hubble's images. This clarity made it easier to measure distances and rule out potential errors in Hubble's data. The latest study used multiple methods to cross-check these findings. It relied on known distances to galaxies such as Messier 106, and measured pulsating stars, carbon-rich stars, and red giants to calculate the distance. The results landed on a Hubble constant of 72.6 kilometers per second per megaparsec, nearly identical to Hubble's earlier value of 72.8. These results deepen the mystery scientists call the Hubble tension, which refers to the mismatch between measurements of the universe's current expansion rate and predictions based on the standard model of cosmology. The fact that Webb's results align with Hubble's means the discrepancy is not due to measurement errors. Instead, it hints that our current models of the universe might be missing something significant. So what could explain this tension? Some scientists suggest the existence of early dark energy, a theoretical component that could only have briefly sped up the universe's expansion after the Big Bang. 
Others propose possibilities like exotic particles, changes in the mass of electrons, or even primordial magnetic fields. These ideas are highly speculative, but they highlight how much we still have to learn about the cosmos. This study represents only part of the data Webb will gather on the topic. Researchers are continuing to refine their measurements and explore whether this tension might point to new discoveries about the universe's structure and origins. As Webb and Hubble continue to provide complementary insights, the task now falls to theorists to develop explanations that reconcile these observations with our current understanding of physics. Whether it's new particles or early dark energy, or something entirely unexpected, these findings remind us just how much the universe still remains a mystery.